This video is for 56a, factorising quadratic expressions with a unitary coefficient of x squared. Now this video assumes that you've learned and understood 52a, that's expanding pairs of brackets, so if you feel you need a reminder on that, I'll put the link to the video for 52a in the description to this one. OK, so, factorising quadratic expressions with a unitary coefficient of x squared just means that every question in this skill looks like the following. You need to factorise x squared plus bx plus c. Now, factorise means put it into brackets. So what we're going to be doing is reversing the expansion of a pair of brackets from 52a. Now, if we take a moment to remind ourselves how that worked, if we start off with a pair of brackets, let's say x minus 5 and x plus 2, we're going to multiply every term in the first bracket by every term in the second bracket, and that gives us the expansion x squared plus 2x minus 5x minus 10. We then simplify the x terms to give us the three term expansion x squared minus 3x minus 10. Now to reverse this, we need to understand the link between the numerical terms in the brackets and the coefficient of x and the constant. So basically, what's the link between minus 5 and plus 2 and minus 10, and what's the link between minus 5 and plus 2 and minus 3? Well, if we start with the constant, the link between minus 5 and plus 2 and minus 10 is that if you multiply minus 5 by plus 2, you get minus 10. The other link is if you add minus 5 to plus 2, you get minus 3. So the process of factorising basically boils down to creating our two brackets, trying to work out what the numerical terms in them are, and to do that we need to find two numbers whose product is C and whose sum is B. So two values that multiply together to make the constant C and add together to make the coefficient of x, b. Now, to put that into practical terms, let's look, have a look at a proper example. So, we've got to factorise the quadratic x squared plus 7x plus 12. So we need to find two numbers whose product is plus 12 and whose sum is plus 7. So the factorisation is going to be a pair of brackets with an x in, and we're looking for the numerical terms that go alongside them. So the first thing we do is look at the product. We want to find all of the pairs of numbers that multiply to make plus 12. Now I'm going to list them in order. So that's plus 1 and plus 12, plus 2 and plus 6, and plus 3 and plus 4. Now what we need to do is find the particular pair of numbers that add to make plus 7. Now if you add the top row, plus 1 plus 12 is plus 13. That's no good. Second row, plus 2 plus 6, well that's plus 8, that's no good. Bottom row, plus 3 plus 4, that's plus 7, that's the one that we want. So what that tells us is that the numerical values in each bracket are plus 3 and plus 4. So our solution is bracket x plus 3, bracket x plus 4. Now, if everything's positive, it's actually a really straightforward way to go through it. When negative numbers start creeping in, things get a little bit different. You need to pay very careful attention to your product values. So let's have a look at one with the a minus in there. So now we're trying to factorise x squared plus 2x minus 8. Same principles apply. We're going to get a pair of brackets with x's in, and we need to find the numerical terms to go in them. So to do that, we need to find two numbers whose product is minus 8 and whose sum is plus 2. So let's think about the product of minus 8. Now, because we're trying to make a negative number, the two numbers we multiply together have to have different signs. But we've got no way of knowing which way around it is. So to make minus 8, the obvious starting point is plus 1 times minus 8. But the signs could be the other way, so we need to write down minus 1 and plus 8 as well. The next pair, plus 2 and minus 4, and again reverse the signs, minus 2 and plus 4. Now we need to try and find the sum of plus 2. Adding the top row, plus 1 and minus 8 make minus 7, that's no good. Second row, minus 1 and plus 8, well that makes plus 7, that's no good either. Third row, plus 2 and minus 4, well that makes minus 2, close but not quite. So the bottom row, minus 2 and plus 4, that makes plus 2, that's the one we want. So the numbers in our brackets are minus 2 and plus 4, so our brackets read x minus 2 and x plus 4. 
third example, factorise x squared minus 3x minus 10. Again, pair of brackets with x's in, we're looking for the numbers to go alongside them. So to do that, we need to find two numbers whose product is minus 10 and whose sum is minus 3. Again, numbers that multiply to make minus 10, one of them is going to be negative. So the pairs are plus 1 and minus 10. Reverse the signs, minus 1 and plus 10. Plus 2 and minus 5. Reverse the signs, minus 2 and plus 5. Now we look at the sum of minus 3. Adding together, plus 1 and minus 10 makes minus 9. Nope. Minus 1 and plus 10 makes plus 9. And that's a nope. Third row, plus 2 and minus 5 makes minus 3. That's the one we want. So the numbers in our brackets are plus 2 and minus 5. So our answer is bracket x plus 2, bracket x minus 5. Now, the last example is the strangest one. This is the one that causes the most confusion. So pay careful attention on this one. Starts in exactly the same way. We're factorising a quadratic. So we do a pair of brackets with an x in each. And we need to find the numerical terms at the back. So we need to find two numbers whose product is plus 6 and whose sum is minus 5. Now the thing to note here is the product is positive but the sum is negative. What that means is you have to take into account the negative numbers in your product calculations. So to have a product of plus 6 the obvious thing to say is plus 1 and plus 6. But because we're after a negative sum we also have to list down the negative products that's minus 1 and minus 6 because a negative times a negative makes a positive minus 1 times minus 6 is plus 6. Next set of numbers, plus 2 and plus 3, multiply to make plus 6, and also minus 2 and minus 3, multiply to make plus 6. Same thing again, we're finding the sum of minus 5. Now we can discount the top row entirely, because they're both positive, that makes a positive sum. Plus 1 and plus 6 make plus 7, that's no good to us. The next row, minus 1 and minus 6 make minus 7, right sign, wrong number. The next row, plus 2 and plus 3 make plus 5, right number, wrong sign. So the bottom row, minus 2 and minus 3 make minus 5, that's the one we want. So the numbers in the brackets are both negative. So when you've got a positive product and a negative sum, both values in the brackets are negative. So the answer is x minus 2 and x minus 3. So now we have three exam style questions for you to practice. What you can do at this point is pause the video, have a go at these on your own, and then come back to the video to see if you are correct. So question A, factorise x squared plus 5x plus 6. First thing you do is list out all the pairs of numbers whose product is plus 6. Well that's plus 1 plus 6, minus 1 minus 6, plus 2 plus 3, and minus 2 minus 3. Notice that because the product is a positive number, both values are the same sign, either both positive or both negative. Now, the pair that add together to make plus 5 is that pair there, plus 2 and plus 3. So our answer must be bracket x plus 2, bracket x plus 3. Now, if you wrote your factors down the other way round, so you got x plus 3 and x plus 2, that's fine, it's still the correct answer. Question B, x squared minus 5x plus 4. So we need to find the two numbers that multiply to make plus 4. So that's the list there. Now we need to find the particular pair that adds to minus 5. Well, that's minus 1 and minus 4. So our two brackets must be x minus 1 and x minus 4. And again, if you've got the brackets the other way around, that's not a problem. Question 3. The product this time is minus 6. Now, because the product is negative, that means the signs are going to alternate. So the numbers that multiply to make minus 6 are here. Now, the middle term of this expression is just plus x. So that means that we've got 1x in the middle. So the particular pair we're after has to add to plus 1. And that's the bottom pair in this case. Minus 2 plus 3 is plus 1. So our answer must be x minus 2 and x plus 3. Now again, if you got the brackets the other way around, that's not a problem, as long as it's definitely a plus 3 and a minus 2.